Hey guys, what's up? Mike here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. In this video, I want to talk about what requirements are, what use cases and user stories are, and what a task flow is. Um, yesterday, I talked about the importance of prep work in your UI, UX design process. Uh, somebody commented and said, Mike, if you can show your code, show your work uh, to give us more context, I thought, Obviously, that's always helpful, but in these videos, um, it's really hard to do that. That's what courses are for, to uh, expand on these things. But I want to give you a glimpse into what I was talking about. Hopefully, you can get a nugget from this and start applying this to your process today. Um, so let me show you an, a, a glimpse of what I'm talking about. So here I have a personal project that I'm working on, and you can see it's an app for a company called Baja Fresh, um, and essentially... I'm working on a particular flow and I'm solving some UI, UX design issues in, uh, in their process. And so as I'm, when I say working on high fidelities, this is what high fidelity is. So essentially I'm in sketch here. This is sketch. And this is my UI design tool for those of you who are new to UI, UX design. And this is what I call working in high fidelity. Sometimes when, if you jump right into high fidelity without the prep work, you get you get halted on a particular screen like this and you're sitting there guessing for 30 minutes to an hour figuring out if you've covered all uh, the requirements and so basically what requirements are requirements uh, first and foremost requirements is essentially a general term of exactly what you need to put into an app website or project that you're working on Requirements always comes from the product owner. So if you're working on a personal project like this, let's say you're doing all the concept work yourself, you have to come up with all the requirements. Now, <clears throat> in these requirements, I talked about scratch, um, scratch paper and bullet, bullet pointing these requirements. Let me show you an example of, of that um, as I adjust the screen there. But essentially, here I have if you can zoom in here. So here I have a, a scratch pad or just a little example. Let's say this is um, one page, right? And each of these pages, if I have a collection of these pages, each of these pages will uh, correspond to, can correspond to one of these, these sections here. So in this flow, this is an app. As you see, these are the screens. When I say um, bullet point your requirements for each of these screens, these screens are, I could essentially have, oh, I'm going to have over a dozen different screens for this particular flow, this app. And so this particular sheet of paper could represent one, one screen. Okay, like the product, this is a product section. As you can see, this is, this is what I call um, just scribble, right? So it doesn't have to be accurate. So this is just me, a representation of the, the product screen. And here are some requirements. This is when I say bullet point. Bullet point your requirements either, this could be done on a whiteboard or it could be done on a piece of paper. So here you see I have a menu icon, order information, nutritional facts, reorder option, category of products. So in here, this is just me bullet pointing what the requirements I want to include on this screen here. And so here is a breakdown of what I call, what we call user stories. Okay, uh, user stories or use cases. Now, in a tech environment, if you're working for a company, this information couldn't come to you in any form or fashion. Okay, it could come to you in a, in a PDF that's very beautifully articulated and, and, and complete. It could come to you on a piece of paper scratch pad, depending on the organization or startup you're working for. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right, so. The, the, how you receive this information is not essential, okay? So when I talk about making sure you focus on the essential stuff and the non-essential stuff, it doesn't matter how you obtain requirements and user stories and use cases. So let me just uh, continue on here. So let me explain. So here, here's a snapshot of, so here's a snapshot of what we call user stories. As you can see, there's three bullet pointed user stories. Um, so user stories and use cases are essentially written out like this. As a user, I need to be able to view all items in the ca category that I'm in, all right? So essentially what I'm seeing here, I have, I'm on this page where you have these different burritos and things like that. So on this app, 
you should be able to scan through. That's me. That's that's the, you can see like the little design behind this. You should be able to scan through the different uh, product items. Uh, as my dog barks in the background. Oh, so here's another user story. As a user, I should be able to easily reorder from previously per previous purchases. So essentially, if I'm on this 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 section here, this 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 page, I want to reorder. I placed an order like last week. I want to reorder. There should be a reorder option on this page, whether it's a button or somewhere on this screen, right? Uh, that's where I have it for now. That could change though, but essentially, uh, that's where it can go. Now, here's another user story or use case. As a user, I should be able to view nutrition facts of each item, okay? So here you see a little link there, nutrition facts and things like that of the food item that I'm purchasing. Now, what I just gone through are user use cases and use stories, right? And they could be written out like that um, in terms of as a user, I need to be able to view uh, my items in a shopping cart. As a user, I need to be able to get back to the home screen from this page, right? You can list out these user stories and the more you list out, the more you go through and check off these items as you're designing these screens, you'll be that much more accurate um, in, in hitting all your requirements. Um, a task flow is also helpful and also useful in the UI UX design process. A task flow is essentially um, you want to flow out a particular task. So for example, uh, one task could be purchase an item, purchase a food item, uh, on this app, right? So that's the task. The task is to per make a purchase. Let me zoom in here, see if that's okay. So as a, as a to, to one, one task could be purchase an item on the menu, okay? So here's you, here you see these little flows. These are just flows from the home screen. From the home screen, I have to click on menu, menu, I go to the menu page. On the menu page, I click on a category uh, or an item or a category within the menu. Here I'm, I'm on the cat within the category section. Uh, on here, I can access my shopping cart, or I select the item, it goes to my shopping cart. Now, this is just a, a a a very low fidelity scribble that I just wrote out on uh, just for, to do this video. But um, uh, what I, basically it, on my course in my course, I'm going to display this and show this in more detail. Actually, if you have access to my current training material, I actually showcase that uh, in one of my videos where I go over um, the UI UX design process. Actually, um, I show this a little bit. If you go to my website, enter your email, and you can review my UI UX design process, I showcase a little bit of task flows, and you can see an example of that. But I go more into detail in one of my videos in my training material. Um, this information that I'm talking about is, is, uh, will be displayed, will be showcased in my new, uh, improved product UI UX design course, um, for anybody that's interested. Now, um, what I just showcased is you can get started on this right away for new users. You might have to holistically see how I integrate this, this information in a, an entire process from concepting up a project from not having anything, a blank piece of paper, and coming up with all this. But that's more to come. I'll be talking about this in the upcoming weeks. But essentially, what you have here is prep work. And that's what I talk about. That's what I'm talking about when I say, make sure you do your prep work before you get to your high visuals UI UX design. As you can see here, I'm not necessarily doing any hardcore wireframes. This is all scratch work, prep work. And that's what I mean by the difference between like when I, when I talked about in the past, like uh, digital wireframes is not, is not, is overrated. You don't have to go digital, but you have to do your prep work. You can, if you, if you're, if you're meticulous in your prep work like this and wh however many pages it takes to complete this screen, how, how, however many user stories, however many 
um, requirement items, however many, how detailed you want to get this task flow. You, uh, it's up to you. So uh, depending on the, the, the level of, of detail and the level of, of, of material you need in order to complete and to start your UI design visuals uh, is really up to you. But this is what I mean when I say scratch work, when I say bullet point your requirements, flush out your user stories, flush out your use cases. That's what I'm talking about, those use cases. As a user, I need to be able to do X. As a user, I need to be able to do this stuff. So um, this is a little glimpse into the UI UX design process. More to come on this. If you are interested in any of this, stay tuned, stay connected to my YouTube videos, and I'll be showcasing more and telling you how you can access this when it's available. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, many of you should be able to take this and get started with this process and these types of things right away in your in your personal projects uh, others may want to wait and and maybe see this holistically and, and from beginning to end um, it's really up to you but thanks for watching guys if you love the things that I talk about hit the thumbs up button thanks for commenting liking and subscribing as always visit my site mlwebcode.com and use the contact link on my site and I'll be happy to answer any questions for you we'll talk soon guys peace